Joining me now, Senior Supreme Court Advocate, also Arvind Kejriwal's lawyer and Congress Working Committee member, Dr. Abhishek Manu Singhvi joins us. Appreciate your joining us, Dr. Singhvi. Uh, my big question to you, would you concede that while you've got relief today from the court interim bail that Arvind Kejriwal has got in the Enforcement Directorate matter, there are still conditions that are being put, conditions which perhaps make this only a partial relief at best for the Chief Minister who still has to battle a CBI case and therefore will still remain in jail. Rajdeep, first a small caveat. Uh, there is huge exaltation because according to me, it's an amazing victory, a very substantive victory. But I say what I say without having read the judgment, either in soft or hard copy. Mm -hmm. uh, that is, as far as I'm concerned, not available yet. Number two, why I say it's an amazing sub substantive victory is because one of the core issues I raised, and let me tell you, this issue cuts across enactments and statutes. It is not PMLA, it is not Rajdeep, it is not ABC. It cuts across the necessity to arrest, mm -hmm. the need to arrest, the imminence of arrest. That issue has found at least prima facie I favor with the court because they have referred it to a larger bench. Mm. From what I heard of the judgment, there are important sentences like mere interrogation cannot be a necessity of arrest. Mm. Now, these are important principles in the fullness and ripeness of time. They will decide this in the larger bench, but mm -hmm. there is a full release. Let us not either exult mm. nor denigrate. There is a full release. Conditions are normal conditions. Obviously, you can't go and start interfering. Obviously, he cannot do anti-release anti conditions. It's a full, unconditional release, of course, subject to so many other proceedings. For example, and I'm very sorry to say this, but it's a very serious thing. More than a month ago, when he was arrested suddenly by the CBI, I tweeted, I said, this seems to be an insurance arrest. Mm -hmm. These are my words. This prophecy seems to have come true. We battled it all the way up to the Supreme Court and won a fantastic victory. But you have an insurance arrest, the poor man is still in jail. And let me tell you, Rajdeep, you arrested him after one year. He was interrogated by the CBI in 2023. And after that, the CBI never called him for interrogation even for one year. You arrested him in March 24, mm -hmm. after the elections. Uh, not Sorry, not March, June 24. My apologies, June 24. Mm -hmm. Knowing perhaps that in the event, because of the strength of our arguments, mm -hmm. the ED matter goes against the department, they still have him in custody. So that result is the fellow, the, the person is still in custody. This is not the way and they're identical situations. But no, anyway, no, I, we'll battle that out also. Dr. Singhvi, as you're saying, you're going to continue to battle out the CBI charges against uh, Mr. K. G. Wal. But what I find interesting, uh, Dr. Singhvi, is that the Supreme Court judgment hints at the need or not even hints, goes much further they reflect the need for a wider urgent review of the prevention of money laundering act which many believe is the real problem at the moment that goes beyond just arvind kejriwal's case there are dozens of cases involving people who've been arrested under the pmla and the court from time to time uh, has uh, has not been able to provide relief because the nature of the law is such uh, that they've been uh, that bail is becoming very dif difficult today the court spoke of the doctrine of proportionality that you can't just go and arrest on a whim and fancy is that the bigger takeaway the urgent need to look at the way the pmla act may be misused absolutely correct as a lawyer as a person who deals with principles of law but had you been the judge and had given these very important principles and then denied release it would have been a empty formality. What is important is the judges have realized that they have to marry principle. They have to marry high principle of law precedent with reality. Mm -hmm. Now, the point you just said, and I find that you are possibly a better position than the lawyer who argued the matter because I don't have any of the actual material, but part of it was read out by the judges. What you have said is most important because a lot of the things and more will unravel. So we must mutually book ourselves for another session later on. More will unravel as you read the fine print. Much more important is the across-the-board review of PMLA. Much more important is the interstices. It is only, you see, the case law system, Rajdeep, decides it incrementally case by case. I argued the Bansal case and we got the principle that grounds of arrest, I, the PMLA, will serve to you. 
Do you know that prior to that, for the last 10 years, I would arrest you without serving your ground of arrest? The PMLA would keep on arguing the ED that, look, I read out the ground of arrest to you, I oralized it, I told you orally, but I'll not give you the ground. So incrementally, we established one milestone. This principle, which is partly referred to a larger bench, partly decided in this case, will establish other milestones. And let me tell you, this is one act in grave, grave need for an overall a review by judges ultimately. Mm -hmm. A review is already pending on the other aspect of 45, which is called uh, Vijay Madhalal Chaudhary Review. The court should take it up very quickly. The court has already, in fact, taken it up once. It could not be closed because one judge was retiring. So I think these are more substantive issues. But above all of this, Raj, is the necessity to arrest doctor, the need to arrest. What is happening today, Rajdeep, is that you have a 10-year case, you have a two-year case, you have all the documents, you have done the raids, you have collected the evidence, you recorded statements, and you may have recorded statements even from me. But then what is it that is required to keep me under arrest? I'm not a flight risk. I can't interfere with witnesses, but you must arrest me. That is the question the court has raised. That is the question they've encapsulated in a fantastic sentence. Mere interrogation is not necessary to arrest. No, no. What is, what Sir? are the parameters, what are the guidelines will be decided by a larger bench. But in the meanwhile, these words will have very, very eloquent uh, effect. On Sir, I courts. take your point on the necessity of arrest and the doctrine of that. But you see the interesting part, Dr. Singhvi, is that while the Supreme Court emphasizes Arvind K. Jiwal's right to life and liberty, that same right has not been emphasized by the lower courts, including, dare I say, the Delhi High Court. It hasn't been emphasized at any level when it comes to Mani Sisodia, the Deputy Chief Minister, who's charged in that same Delhi alleged liquor policy scam, and he's been there for more than 16 months. I appreciate that each case is distinctive, but I sense the resistance at different levels to grant bail to those arrested under the PMLA. So therefore, uh, it appears that while the Supreme Court speaks about the right to life and liberty, that's not being done in the lower courts at all in this country at the moment. They refuse to recognize the right for bail. You are not partially, but largely right, with some exceptions. I won't comment on the Sisodia case, which I'm also doing, which is live and is coming in the near future to the Supreme Court. But why you are largely right is that, and as a general, I just said so in an interview yesterday itself, a, as a general point, it is sad the backbone of our criminal justice system, Rajdeep, were the lowest courts, so-called lowest courts, subordinate judiciary. In other words, subordinate is not used anymore. And then at the worst, the high court. 90% of the matters which are reaching the Supreme Court today would not reach the Supreme Court because you are supposed to have a robust judging. What is a bail? Why do you make a mountain out of a molehill? Here are some arguments on both sides, not two days, three days, five hours, seven hours. Decide the broad merits and give bail or don't give bail. Now, for a variety of reasons, especially in politically sensitive cases or hot potato cases, lower courts are very hesitant. Even where their conscience is satisfied, there are fears. And let me have no hesitation in saying there are fears of all kinds, stated and unstated fears. There are fears of allegations. There are fears of alleged bribery where none might have happened. There are fears of fear itself. And then, worst of all, the high court is also hesitant. So you have almost all the hot potato cases landing up in the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. And that is where the principle of process and the punishment comes in. I know that you will ultimately get, but I will punish you because I know that the process is the punishment through the ladder you have to go right up the, the, the various hierarchies. Let's leave it there, Dr. Singhi. Process is the punishment in this country at the moment, which is why there's an urgent review needed of the Prevention of Money Laundering Act that overturns that basic pr jurisprudential pr principle, innocent till proven guilty. Appreciate your joining us, uh, Dr. Singhvi. Thank you very much for joining me on the show tonight. Thank you, Rajdeep. Thank you.